Hello and welcome. Another case on rank correlation. This time we are going to learn how to assign rank and then to calculate the coefficient of rank correlation. Now in this case we are going to learn assigning rank on the basis of some quantitative data. As in the previous lecture we have already discussed that normally the rank correlation is used to study the qualitative data. Then why are we going to study rank correlation with a very normal statistical data? Why should we not use the method of Carl Pearson? Because for this particular data, method of Carl, Carl Pearson's method of calculating the coefficient of correlation can easily be used. This is just a representative case. It is not mandatory or necessary to use rank correlation for the qualitative data only. When the quantitative data is with so large values that even after changing the origin and scale of the original data, the data cannot be arranged in a way which is suitable to use the method of Carl Pearson. The range of the data is very high or even after changing the origin as well as scale, <coughs> the data may have very large values so that the calculation according to Carl Pearson's method becomes very say troublesome so far as the manual calculations are concerned forget the computer packages or software packages we are just discussing everything um, with reference to manual calculations only so where the data has a very large range the difference between the lowest and highest value is very large and as i told earlier even after changing the origin and scale of the original data the data is still not say uh, in a very convenient form to use Carl Pearson's method we can use rank correlation method for this kind of data at that time we need to assign ranks on the basis of the values available so let us learn how to assign rank that is a very easy process some say carefulness is necessary <coughs> according to various statisticians and various authors we can start with the extreme lowest value or extreme highest value I personally prefer to start with the highest value and according to that way just assign rank or start to assign ranks with the highest value and the highest value is assigned rank 1 the next highest value will be assigned rank 2 and so on in case of x which is the highest value it is 95 95 is the highest value so it will be assigned rank 1 okay which is the next highest value the next highest value is 90 no there is no nine other value in 90s so in 80s i think 88 is the second highest value is it yes 88 is the second so it will be assigned rank 2 after 88 is there 87 no is there 86 no 85 84 83 82 81 no 81 is there it will be assigned rank 3 84 79 5 78 6 77 76 no 75 is there it will be assigned 7th rank after 75 74 73 72 71 is not there but 70 is there it will be assigned 8th rank now 69 68 blah 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 no so 65 will be assigned rank 9 then 60 will be assigned rank 10 then 50 44 and 42 so 50 will be assigned rank 11 44 will be assigned rank 12 and 42 will be assigned rank 13 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. So there are 13 ranks from 2 to 13 and no value is say <coughs> repeating itself. Similarly, we are going to assign rank in case of y. I was cancelling the original values because it makes somewhat easier to consider only the outstanding values for the purpose of assigning rank. In this case, 135 or 140, 142, yes, 150 is the highest value. So, we are going to assign rank 1 to 150. After 150, 149, 148, 147, blah, 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 are not there. So, 142 seems to be the second highest value. So, we are going to assign rank 2 to 142. There is no 141, so 140 will be assigned rank 3. 139, 138, 137, 136 are not there. So, 135 will be assigned rank 4. 134 will be assigned rank 5. 134 and then no in 130s. So 125 is there. It will be assigned rank 6. 125. After 125 the largest value is 120. It will be assigned rank 7. After 120, 140 seems to be the highest. It will be assigned rank 8 110 yes 110 can be assigned rank 9 100 can be assigned rank 10 and then from outstanding 3 71, 70, uh, 68, 65 71 will be assigned rank 11 68 will be assigned rank 12 and 65 will be assigned rank 30 See, more or less, same or nearby ranks are there. So, just on the basis of this, say, look of the data, we can say that there is very high correlation or very high rank correlation between the two phenomena. But let's calculate D for deviations, Rx minus Ry or Ry minus Rx doesn't make any difference because ultimately we are going to take the squared value 7 minus 7 0 13 minus 13 0 2 minus 5 minus 3 12 minus 12 0 1 minus 1 0 9 minus 11 minus 2 8 minus 8 0 6 minus 6 0 10 minus 9 positive 1 5 minus 4 again 1 4 minus 3 1 3 minus 2 1 11 minus 10 1 and the squared values d square 0 0 9 0 0 4 0 0 1 1 1 1 and 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 okay summation 9 plus 4 13 14 15 16 17 18 b square comes to 18 now simple formula the coefficient of rank correlation equals to 1 minus 6 sigma d square upon n into n square minus 1. So it will be 1 minus 6 into 18 upon 13 into 13 square 169 minus 1. So it is ultimately 1 minus 18 6 are 108. 13 into 168. 13 into 168 comes to 2184. So it is 1 divided by 0 0.0495 approximate value. So ultimately the coefficient of rank correlation for this particular data comes to 0 0.9505. A very high degree correlation, rank correlation is there between the two given phenomena. So in this way the ranks are assigned. In this case we discussed a very simple case where there is no repetition of the value is there. Now in the next lecture we are going to discuss a case having repetition of the values. In case of repetition of values how to assign the ranks.